Hello friends, I am Poonam Soni, Assistant Professor Biani Group of Colleges. Today I am going to discuss with you about the if-else statements. In the last class, previous class, we already discussed the if and the if-else form of these statements. These are decision making statements. And now in this class, we are going to discuss nested if-else and if-else ladder. So, let us see. In nested if-else, we have if statement within another if statement. The syntax is given like this, if then condition, then in curly braces we will write the another if and condition and so on whatever is the requirement. Now for the next kind if else ladder, we have the syntax like we will write the if then condition then statements and the next if will be continued or uh, will be contained in the else part of this if. You can see this is the if condition, these are the statements which will be executed when this if will be true and if the condition is false, we will come to this else and in this else, we will check another condition in the if. So, this kind of statement is what? If else ladder and nested if else, if the condition becomes true, we will go inside and check another condition. If the condition becomes true, we will go inside and check another condition. So, this type of statement is known as nested if else and this type is known as if else ladder. Now, let us see an example containing the, um, both these statements. Yes, now let us see an example in which both types of statements are given. We have used both types of statements. This is a program to compare three numbers and print the largest one. We have taken three variables a, b and c and the values are suppose 5, 6 and 7 that we have already taken. Now, first we will check if a greater than b. So, the value of a is what? It is 5 and the value of b is what? 6. 5 greater than 6. No, it is false. So, we will come in the else part. We will check whether b greater than c. So, the value of b is 6 greater than 7. Is it true? No, it is also not true. So, we will go in the else part of this if here. So, it will be printed as c is greatest, which is true in this case. Now, let us change the values. Let us make it 16. So, in this case, b is greatest. See, uh, let us see whether we are getting a right message or not a greater than b, the value of a is 5 and b is 16, 5 greater than 16, no, it is false, we will come in this else part, here we will check b greater than c, that is 16 greater than 7, yes, it is true, so we will print b is greatest and we will not go to this else part, so in this as well, we are getting the right message, now let us change the value of this a, let us make it 25. So, in this case, A will be greatest. We will check A greater than B. So, it is 25 greater than 16. Yes, it is true. We will come inside and we will again check a condition. So, this is exhibiting the work of nested if. Nested if. So, here we will check A greater than C as well. So, the value of A is 25 and C is 7. 25 greater than 7. Yes, it is. So, we will print A is greatest. Since it is the else part, we will not go here. We will come out and since, since this is also the else part of this, we will not execute this as well. So, in all the three cases, we are getting the right messages. Here, this, these two statements are exhibiting the nested ifs. If, if within another if and this statement here, if else, if again a condition, this is exhibiting the behavior of if else led. So, by the uh, by this example, we have seen the two basic types of if else statements. Yes, now the next category of decision making statements is switch case statements. These are almost performing the work, work of if else statements. Uh, what does it mean actually? We can replace the if else statements with 
switch case as well. We will see the difference later on we will see, when we will see the example. So, let us first discuss the syntax for switch case statements. Switch, this is a keyword, case, keyword and this default is also keyword. These three are the keywords that we have to write them as it is. Then this expression is what? This is an integer expression. Here we will pass some value in this expression, some value will be passed here and this value will be compared with all these case, case values. This is case value 1, 2 and so on up to the n values, whatever values are required. So, this expression will be compared with all these values and whichever will be the ma matching case. Suppose this value matches with value 2. So, only the statements within the case 2 will be executed. After executing them, we will come outside the block. If the expression matches with the 1, then these statements will be executed and we will come outside the block. If this expression does not match with any of the case, then in that case, the default statements will be executed. Suppose we have given the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and we have passed 8. Since it is not matching any of the cases, then we will execute the default statements. So, let us see an example. Now, let us see an example for switch case. This is uh, what we have taken as uh, the variable ch and the value is 2. Suppose we have given it the value 2, we have taken a variable ch. Now, we uh, this variable we are passing in the switch as an expression. So, the value of this expression has become 2. Since 2 is assigned to ch and we have passed an expression, so the expression value has become 2. Now, this 2 will be compared with all the values in the cases. So, the first value for the case is 1, 2 is equal to 1. No, it is not. We will come to the next case. We will not execute the statements within that case. We will come to the next case. Now, this 2 will be compared with this 2. Yes, 2 is equivalent to 2. Then we will execute the statements within that case. So, the first statement is what? Print second quarter. Suppose we have divided the year into quarters and if the user is entering 1, it will be first quarter, 2 for second quarter and so on. It is just an example. So, uh, it will print second quarter and the next statement is break that we have not discussed it yet. But what this break will do? This break will take the control out of the block. In wherever a break will be encountered, the break will take the execution of the program outside that block. So, after printing second quarter, this break will take the control out of this switch case block here and here our program ends. So, this is how switch works. Suppose let us change the value of ch. Let us make it 9, which is not the case. The expression value has become 9. Now, this 9 will be compared with each and every case. 9 is equal to 1, no it is not. 9 is equal to 2, no it is not. 9 equal to 3, no. 9 equal to 4, no. Then what will happen? We will come to the default case. So, whatever will be the statements in default case, those will be executed. Here is a printf which will give you a message invalid choice. Since you, uh, you have to uh, give the choices between uh, from numbers 1 to 4, you have not given 1 to 4, we have given 9 uh, which is not matching with any case. So, the default statements will be executed. So, this is how switch case works and to take the control out of the block, switch case block, we need to put a break. What if we do not put this break? Suppose, we have removed all the breaks because we uh, did not mention it in the syntax as well. So, let us remove all the breaks. Now, this is the switch. Suppose, again let us change the value of this ch as well. 
this is the value something like uh, it is 3 fine so in this we have taken the value of ch as 3 and the expression value will become 3 now this 3 will be matched with all the cases 3 1 no it is not now one can wonder since there is no break so we will we move to the next case or we will ex execute these statements until and unless there is a matching case the statements will not be executed until and unless there is a matching case no statement will be executed in that case we will straight forward move to the next case so in case of 3 it is not 1 no it is not 2 no it is 3 yes we have found a matching case so the third quarter will be printed now what next since we have no break here it will continue up to the end of the block it will keep executing all the blocks so what does it means once a matching case is encountered it is not checking further any other case by default it makes uh, it uh, takes it as this is the case matching case and I have to execute all the statements. So after getting a matching case it will not check the case 4. It will straight forward execute the statements within the case 4. So after printing third quarter it will also print fourth quarter. Why? Because we have not given it a break. Okay. So third quarter, fourth quarter and then again there is no break in valid choice and then only it will exit the switch case block. So this is the difference when we are using break and this uh, when we are not using the break. There are few restrictions as well while we are using switch case. Now it is a mandatory condition for switch case that the cases must have different values. No case can have the similar values and they must be constant as well. You cannot use variables at the place of cases. For example, suppose you have used, uh, used here 1 and here you have done it 2 plus 3. No, two, not 2 plus 3. We will make it 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1, suppose we have given it. Yes, it is a constant expression 2 plus 1 is 3. It is perfectly fine but it is not fine at this moment because there is another case with the value 3. So these two cases have got, uh, received the value same, same values they have got. So it will be ambiguity which case must be uh, executed when the value 3 is passed. So you can give the constant expressions here, constant values here but no two cases must uh, share the same value and you cannot give variables as well suppose you have a variable b and the value of b is 4 and you want to use b here you um, we can say that uh, the value of b is 4 and i am using 4 here but it is totally not allowed because in the program at the runtime the value of b can change it can change it can be uh, incremented it can be decremented on any other change in this value but the cases must have constant values because at the time of compilation a jump table is made for the switch case this is the actual difference between if else and switch case there is no jump table made for if else they are executed in a sequence but for switch case the compiler makes a uh, jump table which will give the num instruction number Suppose if the case is 1, this, this number of instruction will be executed. Uh, if the case is 2, this number instruction will be executed. So it is a prior decided before executing the program. But if we will use uh, variables here, then you cannot make the table before because the value can be 5 as well, the value can be 6, the value can be 9, the value can be 2 as well. So you cannot use the variables in the cases and there is a restriction on this expression as well this expression must be explicitly integer integer expression must be passed in switch you cannot 
pass floating point expressions the reason is that you don't have the exact match for floating point values they can be uh, precised as well we can uh, precise them as well the floating point values can be precise for example if you are saying 5.962598 uh, 8 and 9 as well. Our uh, compiler supports only 6 precision values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the 6 values. But if uh, they will round it off and it will become 9. Yes. And if it is 4, the value will be will remain 8. So, it, there is no, no, nothing precise about the floating point values. So, we cannot give floating point expressions here. So, these are few restrictions for using switch case and uh, that is almost all about switch case and uh, thanks friends for watching my video. Please like, comment, share and do not forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and visit our website gurukpo.com. Thank you.